we're going to start this vlog almost the same as we started the last one. It's all about potatoes. Should we do the titles? We're going to take on the world. Right then, we're on our way to allotment to do some chitting. I'm not going to chip me pants. Well, let's hope not. I'm going to chip me potatoes. Have we, Lee? Oh, there's Lee yeah. over there. Hello. So Lee, look, Lee's doing some bushes. She's trimming <laughs> her bush. Trimming my bush. And uh, yeah, and I'm chitting You're myself. Chitting. <laughs> and we'll talk a load of bollocks once we're up there. Usual day then, really. Yep, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I'm sure there's something. Oh, and I'm going to have a rearrange of the greenhouse. So there you go. There you go. See you when we're there. Bye. Right then, one of my jobs today is I'm going to get rid of all the salad leaves now. Might have one last harvest of them. And then uh, dump them out, start making some room. And then I'm going to move one of the chairs over into this corner here to make some more room because we're going to have another shelf or two here later. Because uh, we're hoping to have a busy um, greenhouse this year. So it's kind of like our first proper bit of um, farming in 2024 or so. And uh, yeah, Lee's doing all that over there. She'll do it with her own camera. Right. Got our new second <laughs> and my bucket. <laughs> and I'm going to start to uh, chop down the raspberries. So uh, I'm not sure whether they're summer or autumn. I, we think they're autumn, by the way, that uh, when they started and when they stopped. So uh, that means I've got to cut them to the ground or thereabouts. But then I think, you know, if they're not, They'll have to just fend for themselves <laughs> and we'll have to see what happens. Not knowing what some of the varieties or some of the things are, you know, is a bit difficult. So we're still, uh, we're learning as we go along. So here we go. Yeah, they're definitely finished, as you can see. <laughs> so uh, I think I have to sort of take out some, definitely the dead ones. And maybe I do a bit of overcrowding management so uh, here I go chop 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 blimey Lee I didn't know you cut them down that much yeah well it depends on the variety which we don't know what it is we're thinking they're auto ones so uh, you cut them down to the ground so, uh, there's lots of dead bits as well, which are obviously from before that have just broken. So, uh, like these hollow. Oh, look. I missed one. Like a hollow one. So, I'm just pulling them up as well. And I'm leaving the grass because you're supposed to mulch it, so it's probably not the right thing, but I thought, well, I'll just <laughs> leave it there for now. <laughs> Bye. Right then, this is where we're at and my thinking. It's so obviously we've now just moved the two shells into that corner, but there'll be another one in this corner or just past it. Just the compost and stuff in there for the time being. Then round here, obviously, I've got my um, potting table and a couple of chairs. So uh, that'll allow me to have the potatoes chit in here in the sunlight. So, well, partly on the sunlight because it's got that frosted stuff on it. So I think that'll be good enough. Pete, the pepper's still going strong, which is bizarre, but there you go. Right, I'm going to get chitting myself. Bye. Well, apparently that's all I had to do. Any with eyes or growths, make sure they're pointing upwards. If not, then it's fat end up. So there's me Winston first early sorted. So, up the top we have a Winston first earlies. 
Then we have our wheelchairs with a couple of extras there on the end, three. Then as we go down, we have two trays of Kerr's Pink and two trays of Maris Pipers. Excellent, let's hope they survive. You right there, boy? You're happy enough up here, aren't you, in the sunshine? Yes, about 14 degrees in here, so it's actually quite pleasant in the greenhouse. Obviously with the sun on you as well, it feels a lot warmer. It's a lovely winter's day, to be fair. Our windows could do with cleaning, but there you go. Actually now, I think, looking at Pete the Pepper, I think he has just about had enough. Look, if you look here now, this to me looks like it's dying off. So... He's done well, bless him. I mean, there still are some buds. I still don't really understand quite what's going on, but we'll see if he gets through winter. You never know. You never know. How are you getting on? All right, nearly done. But some of these, look, they've got buds already. So I'm going to leave them just as an experiment. Well, you can only see what happens, can't you? So, uh... It seems a shame to cut them right down when there's buds there, so, uh, you know. <laughs> Hector can hear the peasants, or the pheasants. What is it, Hector? What is it? <coughs> no, you can't run off. Oi! Come here. Good boy. I think that's just about it then, guys. So it looks a bit tidier. It looks a bit less, um, it looks a bit more barren, doesn't it? Because we've got rid of all the um, leaves and stuff we had in here, but they were done. So, uh, ready for a new season, how exciting. going on Lee Lawson? I've come to take out the dead wood and prune the black currants but look they're all budding. Show me, go down. Yeah. Oh, look at all these, they're flowering already. <laughs> oh, I shall take off the dead, like the bits that have got nothing on or very little because it did say to take away the dead wood, any diseased wood, any crossy over wood but <laughs> Yeah, it does look like they're buds. Then you kind of don't want to... Are these buds people? Of course they are. Oh. Yeah, it does need a bit of a thin out, so... Uh, I'll just do what I think. <laughs> I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> it does look a lot more open now, doesn't it, everyone? She's been a busy bunny, hasn't she? Looks a lot better. And uh, the black currant bush all degrassed. Right, back to the boat, everybody. Time for some football because it's Everton versus Aston Villa. Well, I must admit, I really enjoyed going to the allotment today. That, that done me good, really, because I didn't have a good night's sleep again last night, and I'm sick of saying about it. But yeah, I had a really nasty dry cough again. Like I said, I don't feel ill, so don't be worrying about me, but the cough is starting to get on my nerves. I felt like I'd been teabagged by, I don't know, um, King Kong and his big fat hairy ball sack, and all his hairs have got stuck in my throat, and I, it's like a big fur ball that won't come up. That's what it feels like. And poor old Lee's having to hear me go, <laughs> enough in happening. So yeah, so uh, this evening we've got um, one of them steamy bollocksy things going off. You know, that you set on fire, not that you set on fire, steamy things. They're burners, are they? Lee's put some sort of stuff in there and it's like menthol and I've got some Vicks on my uh, chest. So I feel a little bit better. I mean, I'm, I'm well enough to drink. I mean, this is my first beer this hour. 
just watched the Villa game. What a load of old shit. Nil nil. Yeah, that's about as exciting as watching my balls turn grey. Or my pubes on my balls turn grey. Um, really, I don't like pubes. I should shave them off. That's too much information. But yeah, that needs sorting. And um, yeah, other than that, yeah, I say, I enjoyed that. Um, something else, uh, I've been reading some of the comments on our, our channels, both this one, Vlog Couple, and Living in the Ditch. And I've seen a few some people talking about this, me doing this Sunday sermon thing, or me, my ranting in general. And a couple actually have been saying, it'd be nice to see the figures of this, figures of that. I ain't doing figures, right? I'll, put, I'll just knock that one straight on the head straight away, right? There's so many channels out there that you can go and watch, like is it Dr. Campbell uh, or, and Brand and all that, that will show you all the figures that I'm talking about. I'm quite happy to put links there, but I'm not going to sit there with a slideshow showing you this versus this and that. But what I'm going to tell you is I think they're all wankers. That's more my style, isn't it? Just telling you the way it is, all right? Telling you the way it is. Pfizer bought up a, a, a turbo cancer um, thing. What do you think about that? That's my style, all right? And that's it. That's how I'm always going to stay. I'll rant about things. Uh, I was sick to death of bloody women again today in the football. And then I watched uh, Formula E. I've got to talk about Formula E. I watched it last night, so you don't have to. I tried to give it another chance because I do like me motorsports, even though it's a woke load of old shit. I'll tell you what, after the first, the very first five minutes of the qualifying show, which is now on TNT Sport, BT, whatever, and it started going on about we've only got this much time to save the planet and all this load of old bollocks and trying to push this electric vehicle fucking nonsense. Rolf Harris is a pedo. But yeah, and I think, oh, okay then, so how was tarmac made that you're racing on? How was all that carbon fibre in those cars made? What's that made from? Oh, no fossil fuels involved at all, is there? What about those tyres that are being used, yeah? Everyone just thinks they're rubber. Go and have a look. They're not. It's, uh, uh, like I say, that, that just pissed me off straight away. But when it comes to the actual race thing, I actually quite like the qualifying, but I have a caveat. It would never work in anything else because Formula E is pushed towards children. It's pushed towards fucktards that play racing games. They have this special bit. Oh, you go a little bit further around, then you go over these two lines and you get a turbo boost. You think, what? And a few seasons ago, I remember when you used to get a fan boost, the most popular driver would get an extra 50 kilowatts or whatever. That ain't racing, is it? That's not bloody racing. That's not racing. I said, it's just entertainment. Okay, if they would just to go along with this formula and just say it's a form of entertainment got no problem with that don't ever fucking call it racing and don't ever call it green it's nonsense net zero let me tell you about net zero right and this is well it's not my final word because obviously i'm gonna have to say but i'm just telling you the way this is right i'm telling you the fucking way this is net zero gives you license to pollute if you can pay enough that's what net zero is. I'll repeat that. Net zero does not stop pollution. It will never stop pollution. It will allow rich people to pay to pollute. So if they want to fly more miles, they'll just buy some fucking trees, right? But you and me, we'll have to stay at home, in lockdown, in our house. There you go. Well, not being funny. You can't have a vlog without a bit of a rant, can you? Speak to you later. Bye. I'll tell you, happy Mondays everybody and it's blooming cold out here today. It's blooming cold aboard Hannah as well to be honest with you. So I'm just about to relight the fire because I let it go out last night and um, all the marina's frozen. Let's have a look. It looks beautiful but Goodness me, it's proper cold. Well, enough of that. Let's get some um, kindling out from the front of the boat. Because we've run out of that in there as well.
I'll probably be getting. Yeah, but I'll tell you, I don't know what's up with me this morning. I can't get my words out. I'll probably be able to get that rest of that kindling in uh, one of the boxes on the back now. So instead of having to go down the um, down the the point at the end of the boat, it is a bit frosty there, a bit old dodgy, you know. You don't realise it's put my life in danger every time I try and light the fire. <laughs> Bye. Right, let's see how um, strong the ice is. Will it make that nice pingy noise? I'll just throw a stone in the air. <laughs> Donk. It's quite thick then. Well. Been boiling in here now. Let me tell you, I've even got the old flaps open. <laughs> it's all too much. Um, I've just been looking through, <coughs> excuse me, through the me wee thing uh, on living in a ditch and on the vlog couple one. And uh, while I love it all and everything, I just wanted to clarify something on there. I don't use me wee like I would have used Facebook. I don't accept any friend requests. So um, I participate in all the groups and everything that we've got. So obviously the two that I just mentioned and a couple of others that I've joined but as I say don't get upset if you send me a friend request like you would on Facebook and I say no because I don't actually post anything on my own personal timeline so it'd be pointless you following me anyway so I just want to clarify that I don't want to use it like Facebook I don't want to you know if another pandemic bollocksy thing or something like that goes off again and then I see people on there, people that I've friended on there or whatever, going along with it all, well, I'm gonna fall out with you. So it's best that I just don't get involved in it. And I say, I don't need the stress. And um, yeah, I don't need the stress of a personal timeline. So just so you all know that, please don't be offended um, if I decline your friend request. And also I do let pretty much everyone join all the groups. Um, Cause obviously there was Gate and Moors as well, though I don't, we don't do anything on like that. Cause all that attracted was cockpits. <sighs> See, that's one of the problems with these free speech platforms. You do get a lot of gobshites like that. And it seems the male um, gay thing, it's almost predatory. I don't really like saying that because I ain't got a problem with what people want to do in their own lives. But it just seems to me that it seems the fellas, gay fellas on there, are very promiscuous and almost trying to force you into looking at them. I'm not having none of that shit. Anyway, I hope that clears that one up. I'll speak to you later, bye. I've had to come out the side just to get a bit of air. Because it really does get hot aboard hand of the narrowboat with the fire on. So I've sat in the crutch for a bit. But not cooling down, so I thought, maybe I'm having a man moment. I have just been watching some YouTube, and I, there's this fellow, I can't remember who it is that I watch, and um, they're basically questioning students in Bristol University about um, immigration and the illegal and legal immigration and who should pay and all that sort of stuff. They are so fucking clueless. Oh, the government should pay. So then the fellow saying, well, that's our money. And then they start thinking about it and you can see suddenly the pennies dropping. And then when they're asked if they would um, help with um, illegal refugees, and all, oh, if I had the facilities or the room to do it, they say they would. So yeah, of course they would. So when they've got a family and everything, they might have a spare room. They're gonna let any Tom, Dick and Harry have the spare room. Fuck off. I'll tell you, it's all this double standard bollocks that you hear. Woke indoctrinated load of shitheads. I don't even know why anyone lets their kids go to university anymore. Honestly don't. I'll tell you what, they're gonna get a lot more life experience by actually experiencing life. That's my take, bye. One other thing before I go, actually. You can see it looks like it's been defrosted, doesn't it? I wish I'd come out here and shown you the boats bashing it all about. It makes a right old racket and Hector don't like it at all, so he's been barking. So I bet you this is all frozen again by the morning.
It's only the little day boat. Let's see if Chris sees that I'm filming him. And what are you up to, Hector? And what? Don't you like the noise of the boats? Okay, bye. Say bye. Bye. Right, then before we finish for this evening, I've been um, having a little listen to some playlists, some music uh, on Apple Music. I'm an Apple Music fanboy, you see. And um, I did, uh, over the years that I've had it, I've set up so many playlists. And it kind of got me to thinking, was uh, let's have a bit of fun, shall we? Let's have a talk about music or a little, um, see what, what you're into. So I'm going to have to put my glasses on because I ripped this down, like. So, you're going to play a game with me? Love love you to get involved in the comments honestly seriously because music's massive for me it's um it's probably one of the top things in my life to be honest with you seriously i love all my nature i love being on a boat i love my wife i love my dog but i really do love my music and um i've been into music since i was born almost but anyway here we go let's play the game let us know in the comments what the first album that you bought not that was gifted to you or anything like that the first album that you bought and was it on vinyl was it on tape cassette or was it on cd or was it on M was it mds were they for a while those micro disc things we're not talking about downloads here because you too yeah you wouldn't be watching this channel if you're that young so and if you're if you're old and haven't still haven't bought an album you're a tight ass but anyway so what was the first album that you bought yourself now I'll tell you, my one was actually The Smiths by The Smiths. I absolutely loved it. I think I remember it was in the 80s, obviously early 80s, and there's a song called This Charming Man by Morrissey, obviously The Smiths, and he wore daffodils in his back pocket, and it was just pathetically stupid. But something drew me to The Smiths, and I've loved them since. Obviously, I've I've probably got every one of their albums. I bought all their albums, so obviously now we're talking about digital downloads, that's not the same. But I still follow Morrissey even to this day, and um, you'd be surprised that he's really on my side of the um, fence. Mm. Okay, so that's your first one. First album that you bought yourself. Second one, a song that has influenced your life. It's a difficult one, isn't it? A song that's influenced your life, because there's probably loads and loads and loads. I found this one really, really difficult. Because um, I could have gone so many different ways with it. I could have gone along what influenced me to start writing music. What influenced me to join a band and do all this, a form You've a band. Got I've got an email. So, um, yeah, there's so many. But I think there was a time in my life that this is when I just first started going out with Lee. And I was being a bit of a, well, I was being a gobshite and had decisions to make. Let's put it that way. And there's a song by Queen called Slightly Mad and uh, go and listen to that go and listen Slightly Mad and that's what I felt at that time and I think perhaps that was one of the songs that made me sit up and think hold on what the hell's going on and yeah so that made me think I mean there's an awful lot of songs like Kraftwerk Tangerine Dream all those sort of synth sort of music from uh, late 70s early 80s I mean obviously I was a 67 boy so I don't know that much about music in the 70s but I do remember the influence and then into the early 80s and that's what influenced me to start being in a band and all that sort of stuff okay <clears throat> this one's going to be a difficult one for you your favorite song or album of all time and why why was it your favorite album difficult one for me again here one that makes me cry to be honest because of what happened to the lead singer of it and this album for me is called one more light by Linkin Park and uh, yeah I'm not really gonna say too much about it but the fella knew he was going to commit suicide. This is what's Christian Bennington, Benningfield. I always get the bloody name wrong. But uh, yeah, he 
he knew a, a lot about what's going on in, on Epstein's thing. I know this sounds like conspiracy theory, but you just need to listen to the album. It's, it's you know it's a few years old now, and Pizza Gate and all that sort of stuff, and why he hung himself. And uh, again, not wanting to be political, but this is you know I'm a political person. I I, I follow stuff. Um, and when he killed himself, how could he hang himself with three broken ribs? That's what's come out lately, what we've heard lately. But anyway, that's by the by. But I would say if you've not heard of One More Light by Linkin Park and you've got Spotify or you've got Apple Music or anything like that, go and just give it a listen and absolutely listen to the words, right? And tell me he didn't know that he was going to do that. And also, when you go back, when I was talking about Queen, okay, if you listen to that same album with the song on that he's going slightly mad, if you listen to that and you can tell me he didn't know that he was on his way, maybe I'm very macabre. I don't know. So yeah, so there's number three. Tell me your favourite song or your favourite album of all time and tell me why. Explain it to everyone. It'd be great to hear from you all, honestly. I am honestly interested. I'm not just doing this to try and, uh, you know, I don't know, provoke interest or whatever. I am in absolutely interested because I love my music. Okay, what's your favourite artist of all time? Favourite artist of all time? I guess, for a lot of us, it goes back to what you grew up with. What bands did you grow up with? Um, now, I'm not trying to say this is the best band in the world. I think Queen are very close to that, when you actually listen to Queen. They're very talented musicians. But my favourite band of all time, <laughs> you're going to call me a right gay lord for this one, is Duran Duran. It just is Duran Duran. Simon Le Bon, well, and most of them, they're, they're, they're bloody good musicians. This was close. I was choosing between Duran Duran and Prince, to be honest. But because I, I feel more affinity to Duran Duran and being brought up in that era, and uh, I just think they were brilliant. I, I kind of wished I was Simon Le Bon. Because even now, he's a bit of a man crush, to be fair. He still looks all right, you know what I mean? I didn't like Taylor and all that lot, you know, I think he was a bit... I liked, I liked Roger Taylor, the drummer, I thought he was fantastic, brilliant drummer. Same name as a drummer from Queen. So there you go, so yeah. So what is your favourite artist of all time and why? Come on, this is a game you can all play, innit? So yeah, I spilled my beans, now spill yours. Let us know in the comments. Nighty night for now. Bye. Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesdays. It's all frozen again. Well, not quite. It's still it's frozen apart from that very middle bit. So I don't think it got quite as cold last night. There you go. We're off taking Hector for a little walk, aren't we, Lee Lawson? What on earth is going on, Hector? We've been barricaded in again. Let's go and investigate. Ooh. Hey. Yes? What are you doing? I'm going in the bed. Well, under the bed. What for? <laughs> You're going to store um, yourself. <laughs> I need to put a couple of bits in. I need to find a couple of bits. Or hairdressing stuff. Uh, yeah, and I want a little um, shower. Curtain bag. <coughs> Sorry. What a shower curtain. A shower curtain bag. Oh. I might have a spare one. Because okay. I use it for swimming. And I've ripped my other one, so. Okay.
Nothing exciting then. Nothing bye. exciting really, no. <laughs>
yet you have an EU flag in your profile. And then the cherry on the top is a Ukraine flag. You are nothing more than a virtue signaling hypocrite. We see you. And let me tell you, I had to have a look at it, didn't I? I'm gonna say it, because let's see if you can see it, right? This might be a bit cruel, but I don't give a shit. There we go. That woman has never had a cock in her fanny in all her life, right? All she's had on that is uh, 74 cats. There you go. That's what I reckon. Anyway, if you've made it this far and you're still laughing at it, you do, you do know I like, I just like to wind a few up. I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. And um, obviously like, subscribe and share this video worldwide. Now seriously, please do press the thumbs up thing at least. At least do that for me because uh, that helps with the algorithm apparently. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Um, and I know a lot of you won't share it. You can't if you're on that, on TVs and stuff. It don't really matter that much. Fuck, it's a hobby, isn't it, for me? But it would be nice to have a billion followers because obviously I'm a man of wisdom. Anyway, <laughs> with that one, see you in the next one. Bye.